Once you have the right gear, the next thing you want to look for is structure. So it's easy when you're fishing a jetty. The structure is the jetty. A jetty, a pier, um, all those things that are visible above water, that makes it easy. The problem is trying to see what's below water. So if you guys haven't seen any of the, uh, there's videos from Rick's Troxel, AKA Rick's Trox. If you go on YouTube, it's called Reading the Beach. It's a video series, one, two, and three. If you want to get serious about catching fish, now that you found out barometric pressure, tides, and all that stuff, once you get to the beach, you have to learn how to read the beach. So if this is the water line, and you can't figure out what's going on, the first thing you want to do before you ever fish is try to get altitude. If there's a place to park, even sometimes just 10 or 15 feet, you want to look down and try to see structure. From the dry beach, you're going to see hills and valleys. The hills and valley on the dry beach, especially at a low tide, which is the best time to read, the hills and valley, just the small nuances on the beach, often will mimic the shoreline, the water line, okay? So based on that, a fishing zone could be right in there, right in there, right in there, right in there, and right in there. Why? Because water's always gonna try to find a way to go out through the channels and rips. Finding the channels and the rips means if you can't read the beach from the dry side, look out here and what you're gonna see here is the bubbly foam pattern. Maybe this one just has a small amount and maybe this one has like a nuclear plume going out. This is like the heavy rip. And what this means is all this water from these waves, once it comes in, is rolling up the shore, finding that little valley and it's all exiting right through that little rip. Once you see these little plumes in the water, that's your first sign. Fish will go to structure. If there's no structure, they're going to go to where this moving water, this disturbed water. The reason why as bait fish hits this, they can't really see what's going on. There's a lot of disturbance. You're going to have fish ambushing at this back corner here, this back corner here, in this little trough here, and in this little trough here. I see guys try to throw stuff in the middle of a rip. The only way that's an advantage to use is if you let it rip to the back of the trough. And then, just like it does anywhere else, let it billow out, either left or billow out right, and then try to fish back here at that point. But you can't fish the trough. It's too much current. Everything's going in the current and then going out of the current. The ambush predators, halibut bass, all the other fish are all sitting here. I know you've done this before too, when you walk out on the beach, and this is like three feet from the shore. And all of a sudden you're walking, you're walking, and then you walk, and then you walk back up. You guys walk in that little, that little trough alone can hold sometimes as many as 20 or 30 fish will be working that little trough within a hundred yard area. There's places in San Clemente, um, anywhere you get a steep beach like that, like at the wedge, sometimes when there's no waves at the wedge, it really freaks them out when you go fishing at the wedge. But any place you get a steep beach, you're gonna have a deep trough right here in the front. This little deep trough, this little two to three foot trough is a spectacular place to fish. Either one of the light gears, sand crab, um, squid strip, a squid strip, or an anchovy. I mean, I only fish in this little bait box. I take one package of anchovies, one package of sardine, and then one pack of random. Every time I take something random, mussels, clams, anything that's different. Uh, it doesn't matter to me, just something different. A third bait that's always different. And then it's always anchovies and it's always sardines always and when you buy bait look for color in the bait if it has more ice on it than it does bait that's not good bait it's just like with food it's freezer burned that's not going to attract anything you want bait that still looks blue still looks green still looks like an anchovy that's going to make a big difference to catching fish and not catching fish sea wave is a great uh, turner sells that that's a great one um west marine has decent bait Find someone that has good bait, buy a bunch of it. You should get it for about four bucks a bag. If it's more than that, um, I don't know why. West Marine, every 10 bags you buy, you get one free. So I buy all my bait at West Marine and that works out great for me. Once I get to an area and I start reading the beach, the next thing I'm looking for is waves. Whether or not you like waves, the waves are always gonna be breaking in certain areas. Where they're not breaking is a reason. Right? The reason why they're not breaking in this area is because the sandbar, there's a sandbar directly below this whole area. 
So you have a large amount of water coming in, and as the shoreline narrows to this sandbar and it pinches it up, that's what pushes that wave up. Once you see where the waves are breaking, you're gonna to wanna to fish right on these little outlets. This is why this works good. This is gonna usually be right in between sandbars. Now in between a sandbar, every once in a while you'll see a wave like this, and all of a sudden you'll see a gap. Then this whole wave kind of settles down and then it picks back up over here. When you see something unnatural about how a wave is breaking, what that tells you is there's like a little hole right here. Now, if you don't have polarized glasses at some point in your life, invest in a really good pair of polarized glasses, especially if you're gonna be on the shore. These are ridiculously expensive, but it's worth it. These are Maui Jim's nine layers glass. What that allows you to do is see color variances, right? When you get to the shoreline and you want to fish, if this water is all, let's say, green olive, that means something. Green olive means something. When you guys are on the boat, you guys, you look down in the water and see the col The columns tells you something. You're going to see green olive, you're going to see dark blue, and then you're going to see every color in between. What you're going to see in these little nuances in this is this water will be slightly darker than these two sections of water. And that's telling you something about the hole that's below it. It doesn't have to be a nine foot hole in the ocean to hold fish. Remember, they're looking for structure. They'll follow this little hill about, if it's, if it's just a four inch dip, if you guys are walking out in the water, just sometimes you walk out, there's a little dip like that. Just those little dips, a lot of times all the fish wants to do, they'll sit in that dip, and then if something's getting sucked over that dip, it gives them an ambush point. And that's what you want to do. So once you start fishing, once you start finding structure, you want to work this. Now, once you have a current, the current may be going this way, current may be going this way, however the current is, you want to try to fish your bait into the current so that you get a chance to fish this zone and then let it try to fish. If it dies right there in the hole, don't touch it. Once it goes in that hole, if you can, start fishing it at the back of the hole, let your bait come in at the back of the hole, and then make one turn. Something you're gonna to wanna to know in your reels at some point, every reel has an amount that it makes in one turn. If you don't know that about your gear, that's definitely gonna be beneficial for surf fishing. If I throw out 40 yards, once I wait three to five minutes, I make one turn on all my reels. And I know, I brought you the, if you don't know your gear, this is salty. This tells you the turn ratio, the speed of your reel, the foot pounds of drag that it does, and then how much line comes in on one turn. One turn's about 36 inches, 35 inches. That's three feet, right? So what it gives me the chance to do is I can specifically target a three ounce or a four ounce weight to the back of the hole, throw it out there and let it drift in, and then once I get it at the back of the hole, I can fish that hole all the way forward simply by making one turn. That's three feet further, one turn, one turn. And it, it, it sounds ridiculous, but it's like systematic fishing in my brain. I do that with everything I do. I start everything left. I have a left deep or a left long, and then I have a left short. In this, this is my 10 to 30 yards. Here's the shoreline here. This is just 10 to 30 yards offshore. I'll fish 30 yards, making that one turn, 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 change the bait. That's with one of the short rods. Either the light corbina rods, the light corbina rods, or sometimes on a certain low tide, especially if you want to fish Bolsa Chica. Bolsa Chica is an awesome fishery. If you can get into about four or five foot of water, this is one of my homemade ones, but I'll show you the real one. This is called a Halley rig. Now what the Halley rig allows you to do is set a weight, so you can put one ounce, two ounce, three ounce right there, set a weight down on the ground, and then take your dead bait, and then you nose hook your dead bait, and when this sets down, this will find the current, and the swivel will allow the bait to swing in the current. And depending on how strong the current is, the bait will literally run up and down this line, and it turns a dead bait into a live bait. This is absolutely, the most lethal rig for catching halibut. If you've never caught a halibut before and you wonder why, they just fish this exclusively for about one month in a lot of different places, inshore, in sandbars, and then come tell me if you haven't caught a halibut because this catches halibut all the time. Now, you can fish it all the way down to a four or all the way up to a two. Now, I do that because I don't want to keep them. I know people get mad that I don't keep How them. How much weight are you using? So, always match the weight to the current. 
If you can get away with half an ounce, then use a half an ounce. So when I say match it to the current, so in the box, you gotta have a lot of different weights. Traditional weights, pyramids, hook foots, small weights, right? One to four ounces. I match the weight to the line. So if I can throw it out there and it's holding at two ounces, then two ounces is what it is. But I might throw out it again with one ounce and see how slowly it starts to move off center from where I cast it to it starts to move off. If it just creeps right, I might try one ounce. That's just gonna allow that take when the fish does. Halibut are very soft biters. I don't know why they're such soft biters. We'll talk about that in one second. But if I, if I put a three ounce weight on that halley rig and he goes to bite it, he feels tension as he pulls it this way, he'll just release it. It's the craziest thing. But if it's just enough weight where he goes to bite it and it kind of feels like it's moving, then what happens is he takes it, he puts it in his mouth, and then all of a sudden your line either goes slack because he'll come at you, or he'll just take off like a gunship straight away. And that's when you know you've got a good fish, is based on how they take like that. But you've got to match the weight to the current. As light as you can to hold your line out. So fishing left to right, this is the 10 to 30 yard zone. This right here, if you're in the 10 foot rod, this is about 60 to 80 yards. If you're fishing the 11 foot rod, you can go all the way out, you can go 80 to 120. This is like three to four ounces. This is like two to three ounces. And this is always one ounce down to quarter. Don't get crazy with your weights. Like I said, you just need what you do. And once you go left, same thing. I throw it out, one turn, three feet. One turn, three feet. One turn, three feet. One turn, three feet. Now here's what's gonna make you crazy. When I actually catch a fish, I try to remember A, where I cast, and B, how many turns I've made it in. Because sometimes I'm able to explore like a hole or find something and I'll find it, cast it all the way out and make two turns. And for some reason there's fish holding in that zone. And one time at San Clemente, in one zone, I sat four hours and caught 27 fish. And I, I feel like I caught the same fish like five times. You know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't make any sense. It just happened to be the perfect location between waves in a sandbar following a rip. And they were just ambushing from the side. And all I had to do was just get it into this little zone. And they just could not stop leopard sharks, smooth hounds, sand bass, calicos, corbina. Whatever was rolling through the zone would simply take the bait. Once you figure that out, then this might take you a half an hour to successfully or not successfully fish this zone. Then you move middle. You do the same process all over again. You cast to the back, you cast to the front, you work it forward. Then another half an hour later, you go to the right. You find a channel, you fish the back, you fish the front. Now, after you spent 45 minutes to an hour fishing this 100 yards of beach, that's about what you can cast your line left and right. Then you move. You don't throw the talent and say, I couldn't find what I found, I quit. Then you just move. Move down the beach, look for some new water, find some current, find some holes, find a rip, find a trough, and you start the process over again. Never give up, find the fish. Once you find the fish on the edge of the sandbars, in the troughs, in the seams, near the rocks, then work the fish. Um, one time on one of the jetties, this guy just kept casting and casting and casting, and I kept catching fish, and he finally just said, what are you doing? I said, I'm not casting. I'm just dropping it right to the end of the rocks. They were all, you literally, if you had polarized glasses, they were all right within three feet of the rocks. It's not about how far you go, it's about knowing where the fish are and just getting to that. Now, if you are gonna rock fish, 